Now, let's bring you the latest on Ukraine. It has urged its citizens who are abroad not to return until the spring to help ease the pressure on the severely damaged energy system. Russian missile and drone attacks on power plants and other infrastructure have reportedly destroyed a third of the country's energy sector. Well, we can now speak to uh, Yuri Sak, an advisor to Ukraine's Minister of Defence, joining us live from the capital, uh, Kyiv. Thank you for being on the programme. So uh, what is the situation when it comes to energy and, and the provision that you've got at the moment? Good morning. Like you said correctly in your report, about 40% of Ukraine's energy infrastructure has been damaged or partly destroyed by the Iranian drones that were fired at Ukraine and continue to be fired at Ukraine by Russia. Drones, missiles. So, of course, this puts a strain on the energy infrastructure. As a result, some parts of Ukraine are experiencing regular power cuts. Uh, because the government, while it is trying to fix these uh, problems and to restore uh, the electricity uh, in these areas, at the same time, there is, of course, pressure on power plants, on um, electricity grids, and that, that's why we need to save up. And that, wh that's why that statement was issued uh, earlier with the appeal to Ukrainians, you know, who are at the moment abroad, um, if they can stay over for the winter in those countries where they are now, uh, it would uh, be logical for them to stay there because, you know, the fewer people are here in Ukraine, the, the less is the pressure on the power grids. And, and when we talk about the number of refugees, it's estimated to be something like 7.7 .7 million Ukraine refugees staying in other European countries at the moment. That is an, an awful lot of refugees. Do you know how many were intending to come back to Ukraine? It is difficult to conduct any exact polling or to count everybody who was willing to return. But of course, we have seen during the summer period, we have seen a lot of people returning, in particular the Kyiv, um, hundreds of thousands have returned. And uh, right now, with this current security situation, with the continuing missile terror and the threat of drone attacks, and we know that the aggressor is um, negotiating to buy more drones from Iran. So, of course, the situation is such that it is not conducive to the return of Ukrainians who are currently as refugees abroad. How concerned are you about the use of a so-called dirty bomb? Are you preparing for that possibility? We are dealing with a very deranged and very dangerous enemy. We've seen that Russia is capable of committing all kinds of atrocities in the past. So while we hope that this doesn't happen, uh, we have to be prepared. And of course, all the statements by Russia that they're making uh, about the risk of Ukraine using such a dirty bomb, uh, they're nonsensical. Nobody believes them. Um, every leader of every civilized country has already uh, expressed uh, their outrage at these statements. And everybody understands that very often when Russia makes these kind of statements, they're preparing for some provocation. And our um, energy agency, government energy agency, Energo Atom, just yesterday issued a statement that, you know, the, the risk is high because during the past few days, some uh, unusual activities have been noticed at, for example, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, uh, which is the second largest power plant, which is now occupied by the aggressor. So we are concerned, of course, uh, and we are appealing to the international community to do everything possible to stop this from happening. OK, Yuri Sack, thank you for talking to us on BBC News. Thank you.